At the beginning of the movie, a young girl was seen swimming on the beach. This girl's name was Marie Joseph, and she has a great interest in the ocean. Marie was actually the daughter of a king whose identity was hidden. She lived with the nuns by the beach. Apart from spending time at sea, Marie also enjoyed playing the cello and horse riding. The nuns were struggling to keep Marie away from her supposedly unkind hobby meanwhile, Marie's father, King Louis XIV, who was the king of the French kingdom, was giving a speech after his victory. While giving a speech suddenly an unknown man shot him up close. Although injured, the king was able to continue his speech. Then the king was treated by a doctor, and because France really needed a king like Louis XIV, the doctor suggested something that could make him live forever. To get a creature that can grant immortality from the sunken city of Atlantis, a brave captain named Yves de La Croix was sent. In the middle of its journey, they heard a siren which was apparently issued by the creature they were looking for. Immediately the captain ordered his men to throw nets, and sure enough they got a creature that was none other than a mermaid. The captain ordered to catch only the female mermaids and release the males. Soon they sent word about the mermaid and brought her home. Doctors immediately met King Louis XIV. The doctor said that he could transfer the mermaid's eternal life to the king during a solar eclipse. Meanwhile the royal priest was still not convinced of the correctness of the method. He then wanted to ask the truth of the nuns and Marie who lived in the seaside monastery. The priest finally picked up Marie and took her to the palace in Versailles. Mary was amazed seeing the palace for the first time, and she got a servant named Magali while telling stories, Magali escorted Marie to her room, and they became close by frequently chatting together. The priest told the king about his daughter, and the king was quite happy to know that his daughter could play a musical instrument. He said that he would meet the princess tomorrow. The next day, Marie took a walk together with Magali and many people noticed her because of Marie's simple attire. Arriving at a fountain pool, Marie was amazed at the beauty of the fountain and accidentally fell into the pool when the king's entourage passed. The king then gave his robe to Marie and said that she could play music for him. Marie and Magali also got a new room complete with musical instruments. Captain Eves then took the mermaids to the seawater pool that had been prepared by the king. At the palace, the priest expresses his disapproval of the king's plan for immortality. According to him, humans only have one soul and cannot live forever. Back to Captain Eves who was surprised by the king's arrival. The king wanted to see the mermaid. But because the mermaid was still traumatized, she didn't want to show himself. The king then threatened the captain that if the mermaids remained like that the king would punish Captain Eves. That night, Marie who was playing a musical instrument suddenly heard a voice from somewhere. She immediately looked for the source of the sound and finally found a passage where there was a mermaid pond. She saw a creature with the body of a fish staring at her from the pond. Captain Eves prevented Marie from approaching the mermaid, but Marie said that she can communicate with the mermaid through music. In the morning, Marie played a song inspired by her last night's encounter with the mermaid. The king who used to listen to music when he woke up was amazed by the music he had never heard before. He also told Marie to come to the party tonight. In the evening Marie, who was dressed up, looked very charming. The king introduced her to a man named Lintelac, but Marie refused to dance with him. The king invited Marie to dance, but he suddenly released Marie's hand because he imagined dancing with his wife. After the party was over, Marie came back to see the mermaids and told her about the party. Suddenly the captain came, and it turned out that they both liked the ocean, an attitude and hoped that one day he could sail freely with Miri. Meanwhile the doctor watched from above and finally discovered the fact that the source of the mermaid's immortal was her heart. The next day, the king waited for Marie to come, and when she arrived the king painted her. The king then said, that the statue in the pond where Marie fell was the statue of his dead wife. Before long, the king gave Lintelac the title of duke because he had donated a lot of wealth to the kingdom. During the coronation dinner, Lintelac whipped about Captain Eves who could never kill his catch and also came from the lower classes. Finally, there was a debate between both of them which was then resolved by the king. After dinner, Marie met the mermaid and that night she threw herself into the pool.
Then the mermaid approached her, but Eves came calling Marie, so the mermaid went back into hiding. The next day, Marie and Eves were riding horses when Marie raced her horse fast. Eves tried to chase after Marie, but suddenly Marie hit a tree branch and fell off the horse. Eves immediately took Marie to the palace doctor. Marie's arm was declared broken then she was taken to rest in her room. Elsewhere, Eves, who was worried about Marie's condition, got a hint from the mermaid that she can heal her. Eves also came to Marie's room and took her to the mermaid pool with Magali. Once there Marie was plunged into the pool and the mermaid circled around her quickly until Marie's arm healed. Dot the next day, Marie played a song inspired by the miracle she had last night. Hearing this, the king was increasingly convinced of the plan to have eternal life. Marie herself suggested that mermaid powers should be used to heal sick people. Marie also asked the king that one day the mermaid would be released again. Until then, the king had not announced his intention to capture the real mermaid. After some time, Eves took Marie out for a walk. Lintelac had seen it and suspected that Marie was related to the king. Eves took Marie to see the lighthouse beside her house. Then they went to the Temple of Love where they then kissed. Later, the king summoned Lintelac to his room and told him that Marie was his daughter. He asked Lintelac to marry his daughter, and of course Lintelac agreed. After that, the king summoned Marie and told her all the secrets he had kept. The king said, if Maria's mother died when she delivered Marie in the monastery, where she used to live and the man who stood in front of her at that time was her father. He hid Marie, because at that time he still had many enemies. The king gave a pendant necklace with a photo of Marie's mother in it. The king told Marie to marry Lintelac, so they will have wealth that can help the kingdom's financial condition. Hearing that, Marie ran outside and fell down. Elsewhere the priest went to the mermaid's pond and heard the sound of a mermaid connected to him. The mermaid sent a signal to Marie to meet her. Marie immediately came to the pool and threw herself in. There she confronted the mermaid who gave a flashback of when she was captured. Then the king met the doctor and the priest in one room. The doctor told the plan to be carried out when the celebration happened. The priest did not agree with the king's actions because he thought it was a big sin while the king considered it as an advance of science. Because the king did not listen to his advice, the priest finally left, while leaving the gold cross necklace that the king had given him. The sad Marie then went to visit the prayer room, and there she met the priest who was praying. They also prayed together. Eves, curious about the doctor's plan, sneaked into his room and checked some documents. Eves later learns that the doctor is planning to kill the mermaids. Eves tried to tell Marie about it by tucking the documents under the door. Unfortunately Eves was caught by the doctor and immediately thrown into the dungeon Marie, who returned to her room, found and read the document that Eves had inserted. Soon Marie destroyed all the musical instruments and went to meet her father. She asked his father not to kill the mermaid and instead she would marry Lintelac. An argument ensued and finally the king ordered Marie to marry Lintelac on that day. Eves was brought back to the doctor's office, and he was ordered to drain the underground pool where the mermaid was kept. Meanwhile, Marie asked the priestess for help to get her out of the place. Finally the priest managed to outwit Marie's roomkeeper and took her out. Marie went straight to the pond where Eves and his men would dry the pond. Marie convinced him to help her release the mermaid. Finally Eves agreed, and he ordered his men to prepare the ship. Meanwhile the maid informs the doctor that Marie managed to escape. The doctor and his men rushed to the mermaid pool. Once there they immediately ambushed Marie and Eves. There was a shootout between Eves and the doctor's men. Until finally the doctor and Eves fought on the bridge above the pool until Eves was shot. While searching for Eves' body, the doctor then appeared behind Marie. Marie hit the doctor in the face with an iron chain. Unfortunately, the doctor's leg was caught in a rope and Marie did not waste the opportunity. She immediately threw the doctor into the water, where his legs were tied to the turbine and was crushed. The mermaid was finally able to free herself through a water channel connected to a river. Marie, who found the doctor's horse outside, immediately spurred it on to catch up with the mermaid. In the palace, the servant informed the king that Princess Marie had run away. 
The marriage was cancelled, and the king immediately chased Marie with his men. The mermaid made it through several river passages to reach the ocean. She also managed to heal Eve's body that was shot. Arriving at the shore, Marie saw Eve's ship being approached by a royal ship. The solar eclipse would soon arrive, and the king and his army had arrived at the seashore. Seeing that, Marie threatened to jump into the sea if her father would still carry out his plan. Marie said that she was happy to meet the people she loved, but she felt sad because her father never cared about her. At the same time something fell from the water channel into the sea and a siren was heard. Marie saw the mermaid and Eves who were already at sea. Marie took off her father's necklace, and at the same time as the solar eclipse Marie jumped into the sea. The king's troops asked for permission to shoot the mermaid, but at that time the king prevented it. He let the mermaid live. The mermaid then circled around Marie's floating body until she regained consciousness. Eves immediately walked over to Marie and embraced her. The king who saw this realized that all this time he had sinned against his daughter and he begged for forgiveness. He also realized that there was no eternal life and only love which is immortal. Mary finally lived happily with Eves and managed to find the lost city of Atlantis and also the house of her old friend the mermaid who turned out to already have a daughter. And the movie ends. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and bell button if you like the video. See you in the new video released.